Okay, and welcome everybody here in Twitch Chats and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on over there for some Mono Red Crasis in Mythic. Uh, this has been a deck we've been playing quite a bit uh, from last format and now entering in with this format. Hasn't added too many new cards with War of the Spark, just Chandra Fire Artisan is like the only new card that I have in here. Uh, but yeah, basically we're a model red mid-range, which is a, a pretty solid strategy. Like we have good removal with shock, lightning strike, especially with all of the, the planeswalkers around these days, having versatile removal that can that's never dead um, in any matchup is is really nice. And we have some powerful things up the curve. You know, Goblin Chain Whirler is just a just a great card, as as you know, again in so many uh situations. So is Rekindling Phoenix. Um Hellkite's not so bad either. But really, with the mono red mid range, kind of the problem with the deck is running out of gas, and so because of that, we have Hydroicrasis, which is like you know one of the best top end things to to be playing to make sure you continue to have a lot of cards. Um, it helps you gain life, which you know mono red mid range doesn't really gain life, so this gains us some life. They can be really important. Puts a fast clock on our opponent, you know, making like a four four five five creature or so. So it, it's just going to be our top end card here in our mono red deck. We got treasure map to help us cast it because whenever we flip treasure map, we get a bunch of treasures that we can add for the different colors of mana. And we got eight green and eight blue sources to help us out there. So that's our deck. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I really like uh, Legion War Boss these days also with, with like all the little planeswalkers, like the haste that War Boss has. And I think I like the haste that Hellkite has. I could definitely see Sarkin being worth playing over Hellkite, like for sure. Um, but I don't have like, you know, with only the two other Chandras, I don't really have other Planeswalkers. Like one of the real strengths of Sarkin is when you have other Planeswalkers, you get to play it and tick up and you immediately start attacking with other Planeswalkers, which I don't really have other Planeswalkers here. Uh, you know, just the two copies. So it would basically always be minus make a 4-4 and so on. But we can get to the point later on in the game like where we have extra mana and the Hellkite comes down as a 5-5 five, five, and then like you untap with it and you start pinging a bunch of stuff. I, you know, like there's there's good and bad things about Hellkite and and about Sarkin. Um, but yeah, let's give it a try. All right, so last couple of days I've been playing some brand new brews in Mythic. And we've had a little bit of a losing streak, so we're not... We're at what, like 95% right now, so hopefully, <laughs> I'm not really learning my lesson. I'm gonna be playing uh, some more brews here in Mythic, but hopefully we can start kind of turning it around a little bit. <clears throat> yeah, so the Ban Arcbow, haven't played that yet. You know, like that, that'll be our second deck up. Um, I just put that together earlier today, so I, I don't know, I haven't played any games with it at all. And <laughs> we're just gonna throw it to the fire and play it here in Mythic and see how it goes. Okay. Hand isn't spectacular. That's all right. We're not a aggressive deck, you know, like we're a, we're a mid-range deck. We'll hopefully just hit some land drops here. I'm going to hopefully get the spark combo Shalai voice of plenty combo with the Bant Arcbow deck. That's the goal. Hey, Mark. Did our opponent just, like, disconnect or something after they started? What's going on here? No, there they go. Doing good, doing good. Yeah, starting an early stream today. Selesnia Guildgate. Well, I kind of wish I would have just shocked in with the 
Steam vents. I was thinking it was going to be like four color gates with that guild gate there. So it looks like we're playing green white token. So I want to save the chain whirlers if possible. Um, so do I want to just treasure map and start getting counters on that? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do that. I have to activate it during my turn, of course, because the tithe taker. And uh, flower only gets basic forest or basic plains; doesn't get any land, so it's not like I can daredevil flower, go grab a land kind of thing. Oh, really? You like Selesnya Arkbow more, King J? Cool. Hey, it's a BVB. Uh, Oketra. We, we talked about this before we started. Oketra is as like the card I want to see like the least in the entire format, honestly. Like that's that's the one card I want to see the entire like. The, <laughs> I'm so bad. Like our deck is really bad against this one card. It's just so powerful. Just gonna make four fours. No. Yeah, Frisky Biscuits call it AKA Scoops to Oketra. Hey, what's up, Valoraxial? So I guess the plan is to try to race in the air here. Hey, what's up, Leonidaskin? Thanks for that resub there. All right, got a first sub of the day. That was certainly the card I wanted to see the absolute least. So much for the whole Chain Whirler killing tokens. These tokens are 4-4s four and 5-5s. Five fives. So if I block Oketra, taking way too much. Catch us so good. So Daredevil, this is not a Daredevil matchup. At all. That can just go. I could try to Star... So I did put the Star of Extinction in here, which that can get rid of a, an Oketra. So I guess... I guess that's what I'm doing with my life. I guess I want to starve extinction and play some cannonades. Not play this bane fire. It's only see playing cinder vines for their enchantment removal. I'm gonna try this though. I would only get the check lands that are rotate. Like I would only get the check lands if you, uh, if you, if you really need them. You know, if you're using them in specific decks, I wouldn't just get the check lands just to just to have them all, kind of thing. Because yeah, they they're gonna rotate out in, you know, the end of, like the towards the end of September, most likely. So 
this is what the this is kind of like the end of May. So you have June, July, August, September. You have basically a little like a basically four months, maybe a little over four months to go. So if you if you don't need them in that time, or like if you're not using them right now, I wouldn't just recommend just get, getting them. Uh, Dire Fleet's still in the deck. I just boarded it out. This is this is not a matchup for it. <laughs> yeah, it's it. The gods are really hard to beat. They are. Hey, see how it is. What's up? Hmm. Clicked a little too late. Why couldn't they had this hand last time? Whenever I had, I had double chain whirler last time. Why couldn't you have like this with all these one ones? They didn't have all the one ones. So lots of ways we could get punished for holding the fiery cannonade. Really hoping they don't have unbreakable formation, for example. But we do get that other history banalia token out of there by using it then. Uh, correct. If. If the check lands are going to be reprinted, they'll be in Core Set 2020. That's that's when you'll see the that's when you'll see him again. If if we do see him is Core Set 2020, so you basically we'll know we'll know then if they're not going to be in the fall set. But I would say it's unlikely overall. So they don't, didn't have a land drop. Guess they could just be playing March of the Multitudes here. So it certainly looks like how they just instantly passed immediately. I don't really have a good play against March of the Multitudes, though. Yeah, I don't, I don't really have a good play against March of the Multitudes. I'm just going to draw three and gain three. Okay, that's not bad. Of course, we're doing okay on the battlefield right now, but that can always change with, with tokens. I like having access to the Star of Extinction. They have another march. That's annoying. Could just attack for 10 and then fire off the Star of Extinction. Yeah, I think that's my best bet right now.
We'll still have the Phoenix around. Because otherwise, if I don't do this, they they march the multitudes and then untap and play a Tristani or a, a Flourish, and I'm dead. And so this keeps me from being dead. They have this plus Unbreakable formation. It's annoying. That's certainly annoying. They didn't have the Unbreakable formation earlier, of course. Well, we could just be dead then. Good, it looks like no Tristani. They're not just slamming it immediately. That's a good burning. one. That's a good one. All right. Ended up getting there. All we needed was three of our four sweepers. That's all we needed. That's all we needed. <laughs> hey, what's up, Storm? Good afternoon. Hey, Juice. Severs. Yeah, that was that was crazy. All right, we're still in it. Still alive. Yep, early stream today. Um, probably go go from like one to eight instead of three to ten. Yep. Yeah, I don't want people just jumping in the, the channel, you know, random people just jumping in the channel and giving the Game Game of Thrones spoilers and stuff like we've had some other Sunday nights. It's the last episode. So jumping on early here. I only wrote down three decks right now. I was thinking about maybe playing the decks like a little bit more than, than the five matches. We'll kind of see, or maybe, maybe I'll play a fourth deck. Um, you know, we'll kind of just see how these decks go and everything. That's unfortunate. Yeah, you can put your prediction in, in Discord. I, I'll, you know, we can see. I'll, you know, I'll check afterwards. I don't want to. I'm not actually going to look at predictions beforehand because I don't want to have any ideas of like, you know, like what, what is going to happen or what 
can happen and all that kind of stuff. Like, I know, I don't know, I don't, I'm basically just kind of even staying away from predictions. Hey, what's up, Arturius? But yeah, you can definitely put it in there and kind of see, you know, see if you're right. So why would this 1-1 one, one not attack here? So in case they have another removal spell, um, in case they have like a removal spell for the Chain Whirler, I can't, I can't like wait and then see if they have the removal spell and then use the shock to kill one of the history tokens because these will be four threes next turn. So I'm just going to go ahead and take out a history token right now and make it so even if they do have like another Conclave Tribunal, for example, then they don't get to just attack for uh, nine, which is a lot, of course, and flip Legion's Landing. I'm yeah, I'm not disappointed by the last season. I know it's the the popular thing to be disappointed and everything, but I I've enjoyed it. Um I obviously it's it's rushed cuz they've just had 6 episodes. So I mean it's it's obviously been rushed, but Besides that, I think it's been pretty good. Especially comparing to pacing of the previous seasons. Certainly understand people not liking the rushness of it. I maybe I just shouldn't have I mean we did get rid of a a land there, but maybe I shouldn't have just activated. So I just have one card left. If I just don't activate I could Krasis for you know make a four four draw two, but I can also just kinda wait on the Krasis. Whoops. Rain come down. If I just wait one turn on the cr the crisis is going to be a whole lot bigger. Hoping that card wasn't there. It's a problem. Looks like I didn't have another turn. <sighs> GG. I can kill one of these, but then that's three, six, nine. I'm taking exactly nine. I guess I didn't have one turn. I thought I had another turn. I guess I didn't. Close game there, real close game. Good match. After that first one, after that first game, I wasn't feeling too confident. Games two or three, but had a good match there. Yep, Splinter Twin got me. I didn't didn't prepare for Splinter Twin there. March of the Multitudes plus Flourish is just Splinter Twin. Is just Deceiver Archarch plus Splinter Twin. It's just the instant speed. Like that end step kill. Hintelin Harbor Breeding Pool. What do we got over here? 
Uh, Nexus deck. It's not good. Count Davey, thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. Thank you very much. Second sub of the day. See, why would it make sense to tap the one blue land and not one of the green lands? Like, why would that? Why would that be the auto tap land? Good chance I should just should have just drawn my card there and just hoped it was the fourth land instead of searching for it so we could have played one of these things. But I'm not very confident in winning this game anyway. Yeah, they used Blink for, for just two mana. They didn't cycle Blink. I forgot Emergent Zone was a card. I forgot that was a card. So they can... I can't imagine we're beating Willow's Reclamation plus Search for Iskanta at all. Can't possibly imagine we win this game. Um, I like... I still like Celestia more than Gruul. I've never played... Bant... before. I just put it together earlier today. And so we'll try it out. Good game. But I like the Slesnia version. Okay. So we need War Bosses and Cinder Vines. Um, treasure Map, Krasis, Chandra, all kind of slow. Go with this. Yeah, whenever you lose matches, you go down on percentages, and whenever you win, you go back up, and then whenever you're in the... And it's saying, like, how close you are to the top 1,200. We've been in some losing streaks the last couple of days. I've been playing, like, these... These different brews and haven't been doing as well. That's okay.
What am I doing? Besides playing Legion War Boss. Sorry, I was looking at the chat. Sorry, my bad. I don't. Ugh, that was bad. Well, could have had that extra 1 1 out there. Good thing is we are on the play here. We're a little ahead. Um, opponent's been slow also with not having as Kanta until turn 3. So that would have been 2 damage right now that I missed by not playing that War Boss. It would have had that extra 1 1. Yeah, I have a Selesnia deck that I recommend. The Selesnia Arc Bow that I play. I like that deck quite a bit. Um, uh, I'm going to be, you know, trying this Bant one out here in a little bit. I haven't played it at all yet. This is just lethal. I don't know if we need to play the other war boss. I don't know like what kind of sweeper they're gonna have, but I could just turn like by playing the war boss, they could just like counter it by chance. Really I have to just I wanted them all to attack. And so by by countering it, you know, like they could have like the counter like they could have fog plus uh counter spell here. Oh, why don't why don't I have a... Ugh. I couldn't kill that thing. Oh well. Let's do the two upstairs. Yeah, I thought with, with the other trigger on the stack, I didn't think I was going to have to hold control with there being another trigger on the stack. I know usually you need full control. Um, but yeah, there was... Since there was already a different trigger on the stack, I thought it was going to let me respond before blockers, but oh well. Yeah, Tulsimer is in the Arkbow deck. I don't know if... I don't... I'm thinking about taking out Tulsimer, basically. Uh, I think I'm going to replace just Tulsimer with Tristani. Well, we can't really ask for a better hand. I mean, we could have, like, double Cinder Vines or something. Double Cinder Vines, double War Boss, but, yeah. Cinder Vines into War Boss is as good as my deck does. This is as good as I got. If I don't attack with War Boss, we get like, you know, two damage in and and everything. We just kind of keep on doing the two damage. I think with Cinder Vines, also, I can just really try to push the damage. Dope. Put him down to seven. Hopefully we're not dead.
Okay, good. Probably not dead. If I try to daredevil sabotage, they can just um, cast like the fog before the sabotage would trigger. Yeah, so they're going to kill Cinder Vines. Hey, Trunks. <laughs> okay. No other fogs. They needed a, they needed more fogs. All right. Good job, Mono Red Crisis. One and one. Yeah, it was a nice win. Yeah, War Boss before combat phase that time. Um, what do you think of the Tezzeret deck? It it was all right. Uh, it wasn't, I. it's not like a real competitive deck, um, but it's certainly one you can take to F&M and have fun with and everything. Let's keep. Being on the play with turn one land where elves is always unbeatable. Yeah, I had the Abzan Citadel deck from a couple of weeks ago that worked out pretty well. Haven't, you know, really updated it, but um, I don't know if it needs like a whole lot of updates. Like maybe Sideboard gets some Elder Spells in there. I need to try to hit land drops here. Good old Sultai here. Hi, Denise. Man, think of how good a Chain Whirler would be right now. It'd be so good. When he lands, though. Oh, man. No land drop? Rough. Keep a two lander on the draw with the scry. So we saw four cards, no lands. Well dang. Um, some new cards from Modern Horizons that show the mechanics for it. Have you seen them? Slash, what do you think? I have not seen them at all, Sloth. Rise, my elemental friend. Good game. No. So I like Coil Cannonade. I mean, so I like Coil Cannonade Star of Extinction. I like all these cards against the Sultai deck. Um, I don't like Banefire. Banefire is good at going upstairs and killing planeswalkers though. But everything else I, I kind of you know, I like basically all of these cards. Um Hellkite's not so good, I guess. I'll take out Hellkite. Maybe I take out Chandra. I definitely like Daredevil. Maybe it's Chandra. Let's go with this. I'm relying on treasure map and Krasis for our card advantage. Is it Drake's? 
Um, I I don't have any like firsthand opinions of the deck, like playing the deck. It's not a deck that I've played, but it usually looks pretty impressive whenever I play against it. Um, I think it is, you know, I think it's a, a definitely a reasonable choice to be to be playing right now. Um, I think it's pretty pretty good deck. Duran, thank you so much for that Twitch Prime sub. Welcome to the channel. So buyback, changeling, convoke, cycling, entwine, hellbent, kicker, and replicate. Those all, yeah, those all make sense. Those are all uh, mechanics that are pretty, pretty liked. All right, Paradise Druid out of here. Hopefully we draw the fourth land. We haven't drawn a land yet this match. We didn't draw any lands last game. Haven't drawn a land yet this game. I'd like to just draw one land this match. That's all I'm asking for, just draw one land during a match. No, I don't think Hardikiran will really see modern play with all those Planeswalkers. I don't, I don't think so. I, mean, I, could, I could definitely be wrong. Um, there are a lot of good 3 CMC Planeswalkers, but... Well, good. <laughs> our opponent's getting us that land, even if we can't draw it ourselves. Opponent's like, here you go. So I haven't, I haven't played Modern in, in a while, but whenever I did, I really liked Green White Company. That was my favorite deck. But that was like pre Arc Light Phoenix days and stuff. I've been playing, you know, I've just been a, a standard streamer since then. Yeah, what a, what a nice opponent giving me that land. That was really nice of them. Oh, I'm sorry, Storm. Attack. I'm saying, oops. Kind of maybe I'm saying that they have some spell that's going to deal with both phoenixes. They're saying like, oops, like I shouldn't have played the second phoenix, or I don't know. Yep, Daredevil trophy could could definitely come in handy. We had a lot of mana. We can Daredevil command the Dreadhorde. So what if... So they want this this wow growth walker so they they gotta have another explore creature in hand right, we're gonna do something a little different here what if we go daredevil trophy destroy the destroy an overgrown tomb and then do you want to go get a basic land? If so, all right, they can get the basic land, but now Wild Growth Walker is out of there. So kind of make them shuffle that Wild Growth Walker away. All I really need is one of these Phoenixes to connect to then Chain Whirler, finish them off. If they don't, if they don't, you know, shuffle, then, you know, we've got to just destroy land and definitely makes it a lot easier for us to kill them. All right, so they are... 
Command the Dread Horde, Nissa. Basically on the draw. I don't I don't know if I want all these fiery candidates on the draw. Um I think I want a couple hell kites back in. I'm gonna play one candidate still. Why not kill a creature? Because those creatures don't matter. Like those creatures on the ground just act they just actually don't matter at all. Where that game was at. However, shutting my opponent off of mana. That's a, that's much more valuable. With us having the flying things, burn spells them, presumably having Wild Growth Walker plus another Explorer creature, so they'd have more creatures on the ground for defense. If if I'm in the opponent's shoes and like the a creature just dies to a trophy, I'm just like, all right, whatever. I'll just have my cr creature die. I'm not going to go get a land. But having one of the lands blown up. Because the only, like, that, that set them with four lands. So if they had Wild Growth Walker plus Jade Light, like, maybe they needed five for that. And the only, the land that we knew about in their hand was also a Shock Land. So maybe they'd have to Shock for that. Well, considering we still haven't drawn a land this game. This whole match, sorry. We haven't drawn a land this match. I'm not sure keeping... Uh, So yes, if they did not get a land, they may have had to shock in uh, to be able to Jade Light plus Wow Growth. Hmm. I mean these these two cards are both very good cards. I think I'll keep this. Like, if we draw lands, that's good. If we draw any of our 12 shocks, lightning strikes, lo lava coils, those are good, too. So between all of our lands and those 12 burn spells, we have so many good draws. Phoenix was not one of those. Was not a land or early burn spell. We got 23 other lands, 12, burn 12 early burn spells. So basically any of those 35 are good draws. Keep it. Dang it. <laughs> okay, maybe not that specific land. Okay. Maybe maybe that specific land wasn't the best. That one colorless land. Play two Paradise Druids. It's probably a Krasis here. Not getting there. I can't possibly beat Anissa next turn. So I just have to take out the Llanowar Elf. So this was... This ended up being a terrible keep, basically, how we've drawn... Couldn't get to the Chain Whirler on turn three. Definitely wanted that. But, I don't know, I just had terrible keep. That's a, not really an accurate adjective. But, we're not gonna, we're most likely not winning this. So we've drawn one land this match. We drew the one Arch of Arazka. It's kind of crazy. All the draw steps, game one, game two, game three. And that's it. That's all we've drawn. I'm 
just trying to stay alive at this point. If I kill the WoW Growth Walker, I'm taking five and going to seven. And then if I like play a creature, they have a removal spell for it. I'm taking five again, going down to two, and I'm just I'm just dead. So this at least slows the clock that's a attacking me a little bit. Jeez. Well, I tried. Obviously, we're playing a Phoenix if we draw land. So we drew one Arch of Araska in the three games, the entire match. For lands. <laughs> wow. And each each game, I kept like land light hands. I kept two two landers and one three lander. <laughs> we drew one total land throughout three games. That's that's crazy. No. Nope. Yep, you know, sometimes you get magicked. All right, one and two. Blue green deck number three in a row. Let's see if. Let's see if I can not kill this Lanamore Elf, and hopefully they don't do anything too crazy with four mana, and I can clean it up. I, I definitely like drawing that Rootbound Crag. Not, not only does that turn on Krasis, but this also makes me having a Chain Whirler look less possible, I suppose. So I could see them playing like a Paradise Druid here. Paradise Druid. Dang. Hey, Dr. Colta. Not much. Got our early stream going today. Playing three fun decks here in Mythic today. Maybe a fourth. We'll kind of see how it goes. But maybe I'll play like Ban Arcbo and uh, Grixis Control a little a little more than just the five matches for those decks. I play Chandra, they could have a Nyssa kill Chandra, but then then I guess we basically kill Nyssa. You want to play with fire, huh? Sit back and watch it burn. I'm playing ranked right now cuz I think uh for the most part I've gotten a lot of feedback that people like watching the ranked matches more. No, I haven't played much Commander. I've played some, but not not very much. I wouldn't say that I'm any kind of expert on Commander or anything. So definitely getting in Daredevil, Star, take out the Bane Fire. Hmm. I know last time I dropped a couple Chandras. I don't know, maybe I want Chandra. Maybe I shouldn't drop Chandra. One Cannonade or Chandra? I'll, I'll play the one Chandra over the one Cannonade there. I'm going to take out a Hellkite for a Cannonade. There we go. We'll kind of split. Like, you know, maybe we need a Cannonade. Maybe we need a Chandra. Maybe we need a Hellkite. Maybe we need a Star of Extinction. We're going to just play, like, all these four ofs, basically, besides the Daredevil. And then we'll have these little one ofs. See what we need.
yeah there's 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 more combination in or sorry there's there's more competition in ranked the the ranked matches are are certainly harder than the constructed queues um i like the format of the constructed queues though i like paying the entry fee and and everything and getting like you know i really like that format but um kind of need this arboreal grazer is this a mastermind deck nope guess not no maybe not a short stream I haven't decided if we're playing the fourth deck or not or if I'll just play the the other the other two decks later you know, longer Hmm. So I could shock to prevent like a Nissa next turn, but then even if I even if I do that, if they just wait like an extra turn to play Nissa, I'm still not really beating the Nissa anyway. So I think my best chance is them just not having a Nissa. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's only permanent number eight. I kind of wish I would have kept that Krasis. Every single card since then has been a land. You know, we just had the three mana whenever we were scrying. Ooh. Solid draw step. What do you got over here? Some, some stuff. Some cards. find my notes helpful. Crisis. Modern Horizons is going to have 40 different keywords. The non-evergreen keywords in it. 40 different ones. That's a lot. That's a lot. This grazer just gets to block. Yep. Why does that thing have reach? It's like a little monkey. How's a monkey like blocking a dragon? You can just it can climb on some trees. That doesn't mean it has reach. I follow the tracks of the wise. Yeah, Oketra doesn't have reach. <laughs> this god with this huge, huge bow that shot down, you know, Pegasus. No reach. This little monkey. Definite reach. Alchemy with a Twitch Prime sub. What's up, Alchemy? Thank you so much there. Fourth sub of the day. Yeah, Ravager Worm, no reach. So we're not in a very good spot. They still have five cards. We're just drawing. Yeah, last match we drew one total land in the in entire match. You are setting a bad example. This game we've drawn one spell, that one rekindling phoenix. 
I have learned all so I we're not, not looking so good here. But yeah, I'm going to two for one myself to get rid of that Tamiyo because they'll keep on getting more and more cards. So they got a lot of basic lands for a three color deck here. A good one. I protect that which cannot protect itself. I wonder if our deck should just be playing Immortal Sons Behold, instead of Chandra's. Power. With like all these decks just relying on planeswalkers these days. All right, well, we got a Star of Extinction. We're gonna need to draw a Star of Extinction. We can blow up like the swamp. And they didn't plus on a land. Okay. Maybe they'll give me another turn to draw a Star of Extinction. Yeah, cause we'd be dead next turn. Otherwise, we'll see if they Still have lethal, like it's likely. Nope. Hopefully it's not another one of those days of drawing only non-lands or drawing only lands, not drawing any combination of the two. Well, that's been four games in a row of that. Well, I guess not in a row, because the last game I don't think was like that. All right, anyway. Um, seeing their deck more, I don't really know We need know if we need Daredevil. I think I want the extra Chandra, this Hellkite for sure, and a Banefire. Let's do that. Okay. We start at three, but it's a good good curve once we start at three. We'll take it. Chain whirler on the play is really good against Land War Elf. Hmm, they got Grazer. Well, that's a fast start for them. They can have turn three Nissa here without me being able to interact with it in with uh, removal spells. Even though, they've, even though they've had the fast start, the good news is they only have three cards in hand, so if they don't have the payoff, which is certainly possible, it's going to be good for us. Yeah, season finale. Hi, hey, what's up, Yud? Happy Sunday. I will protect the virtue of this world. Um The land shall conquer you. Yeah, shall conquer you. I 
I will endure. <sighs> so I could have shocked the Lanor Elf and then to see if they block, but then if they don't block, I guess that's the same. Maybe I should just shock the Lanor Elf there. Alright, as Kanta gets to flip. Thanks, Yud. Yeah, definitely excited for the season finale tonight. Hmm. Alright, you're gonna minus or you're gonna plus. Ticking up. Let me aid Going upstairs. So I wanna see if they I want them to chump lock with this forest. Well, they're definitely not jump blocking with the forest. River's Rebuke. Hmm. So I guess I'm playing Krasis this turn. Subject is easily agitated. Because we'll just bounce. You know, so we draw a card because they're going to bounce the Krasis. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I could lava coil this forest. And then they don't draw that extra card unless they draw the land. Or I just draw a card. Yeah, I think we just lava coil this forest. Not too confident we're gonna win this. Cause we just have four mana, they have a lot more mana. You know, like spending being able to spend a whole lot of mana is definitely ideal. So I'm not too confident here. I don't think they were blocking at all. They called my bluff. Yeah, Bant Arcbo needs a thumbnail. Um, let's go with a Frilled Mystic and uh, Shalai there. I'm dead. This is what having a mana advantage turn after turn does for you. I would like Especially with Hydra Crisis. Both those both those games we lost, we just couldn't play any of our spells. Or like you know, we just we just got stuck with so many expensive spells in our hand and couldn't play them. Couldn't unload our hand. Shalai, Yud. For the other one. Hey, Boomer. It's a little Vivian in the in the Command the Dreadhorde deck. I could see little Vivian in that deck, minusing and missing quite a bit. All right, so this is going to be my last match here with Mono Red Crisis. We're just going to play the five here. And...
and then we'll move on to band. <laughs> We've not had very good luck the last few days here in Mythic. Down to 92% now, lowest I've ever been. 95, like, we started this the lowest I ever was. And now we're even lower. We'll see how we do here. Vivian doesn't put cards in your graveyard. But yeah, no, I, I understand the flashes would be the good part of the card. I understand that. But the th thing is, all the other cards in the deck are really good. I don't, I don't really know what Vivian's better than. I guess I could just take this. I'll just I'll just take this. I don't love Chain Whirler, but it does get to go out of my hand so that you know another bol a follow up bolus, um, which is pretty likely because they knew about the lava coil. So it's pretty likely they have another follow up bolus or something similar that we just want to get the cards out of my hand. That was a good one. Thanks, Yud. So right now they can grab Phoenix and Chain Whirler. Which one you want, Phoenix or Chain Whirler? I'm a little surprised they just threw away the Ritual of Soot when they could have just Chain Whirled away the Daredevil. The Phoenix isn't like spectacular for them because the token doesn't do anything for them. I am a god once again. This was sacrifice, not exile. So I could just sacrifice the Phoenix. Hey, Boomer. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for the tier one sub there. So number five on the day. So we are Turning our Phoenix into an 0-1 for one turn just to kill their Phoenix, basically. So now, like, that Phoenix is out of there for good. Uh, 
Oh, that's with Path of Discovery. Okay, so okay, so yeah, so it's a so Emmanuel. So you have a lot. Okay, so you just have a lot different deck then. So you probably have a lot more creatures and and everything. But yeah, yeah, Littleness is great. Playing playing at instant speed is so important in standard, which is why Little Teferi is so strong because it keeps you from playing at instant speed. All right, that was predictable. Death's master. So we got an interplanar beacon over here, huh? We've already seen them have a lot of discard, but I'm I'm still just gonna pass the turn. I know I can I can draw an extra card with Cove or Arch, but so I'll just pass in the turn. No, don't don't tap the Cove. I guess I'll use the Cove first, so that I can untap and and have the mana for these. It's not even worth it. Because once I use five mana on Arch of Arazka, I'm not really playing very much else. I mean, I guess I have three mana, so it's like if I dr if I do draw a Chain Whirler, I could play a Chain Whirler. Yeah, it's okay that we're doing, drawing land, a whole bunch of lands here because the opponent's drawing a whole bunch of lands also. So we're good. Hey, unguided nine, <laughs> unguided none. Uh, good Sunday. Happy Sunday. Um, did I get dis disconnected? Or are we waiting on the opponent? Like, it says we're waiting on the opponent. Okay. There it goes. No, there's no queue for donation decks right now. Nope. Uh, you know, just... You just tell me, whenever you have a donation deck, you just tell me what day and what time slot you'd like me to play it, and I do that. I have one deck I'm playing tomorrow. Basically, the, the only donation deck I think that I have right now is I have a, a, a dredge deck that I'm playing tomorrow. I think that's the only one that I have at all right now. Mask is scary, but underneath I'm just a normal diabolist. I don't think you'll be needing that. Ugh, what a whiner. Hmm. So one point away from killing them. Want to go, tough guy? This is just gonna be bad for you. You but a drop of power. So I was gonna attack the nickel bolus for three, attack them for four. I do want to kill bolus, but um, I was gonna just ignore the Davriel. Yeah, I can play it today. Yeah, you can be the fourth deck here for today.
All right, so Grixis. Let's get these war bosses in. Um, taking shocks out. Extra bane fire. I don't love Hellkite here. It's very easy to kill Hellkite. I do like Lava Coil, though, because of uh, Nicol Bolas, Dragon God, Enter the God Eternals. Uh, Sar Sarkin making a 4 4. I think this is what I want to do. Star of Extinction is really not that bad. If we get behind, it can be a, a pretty great card. I could I could play this and I could play Star of Extinction instead of Lava Coil. The problem is, is drawn Star of Extinction ever in like the first tons of turns. It's just going to get discarded. It's like if we're behind and if it's in the late game and then if we top deck it, it's a it's a good top deck. It's just a lot of ifs. No, whenever you don't have uh, treasures, the treasure cove is just a it's just a colorless land. I could see playing that fourth coil over the strike. The, what I like about strike is it, you know, going upstairs uh, to help us out clears out planeswalkers pretty well. Um, if they minus their nickel bolus or minus their sarkin, you know, we get to use lightning strike to kill those. So they mulled a six, kept a one lander. Didn't hit the second land and wanted to go home. <laughs> I guess so. All right, so that's Mono Red Crisis. So we ended up going two and three. Uh, I liked our chances that game, though. I mean, we had we had a strong one, even though our opponent kind of con conceded there. But this is a, a fun deck to play, and we had a whole lot of close games. Like even though we lost, you know, we lost three one two. That's really not that bad in, in Mythic, and you know, it's just one you know one different match, and we're three two, and then it's it's only good, you know, kind of thing. Um, I did have. There were like three games there in the middle, including one match. That, like we lost one match because we didn't draw a single land. Like we drew one land over the entire match of the three games. I kept a two lander, a two lander, and a three lander, and we drew one total land over the three games against another mid range deck. So that was one match we lost, um, and you know flooded out a little bit sometimes also. But overall, the deck was fun to play. Felt pretty good. Chain Ruler is just very very strong so is rekindling phoenix both of these cards are just awesome chain whirler and phoenix and so are burn spells lightning strike shock these cards are awesome i'm not absolutely in love with treasure map in this format you know it's good against like the grixis control like we had that last time but it is kind of slow and with all these planeswalkers around and everything Certainly a consideration is moving away from Hydroid Crisis and Chandra. Or at least at least moving away from Chandra. Like maybe we should be moving away from Chandra and playing Immortal Sun because of all the planeswalkers everywhere. Like this could be an Immortal Sun deck. Is basically what I'm trying to say here. This could this could definitely be a pretty good Immortal Sun deck. That's something to think about. War boss is just amazing in the sideboard. This card, like against like the decks where it's good, it's so good. I love war boss these days. Cannonade's really good these days. Um, Star of Extinction was pretty nice. So yeah, that's Monarch Crisis. I'm not sure if we really need the Bane Fire in the main, honestly. I I don't. I think that's my least favorite card. Kind of want something else. Hellkite. Hellkite wasn't that good for us in these games. I could definitely see Sarkin being better still. I'm not sure. I should probably try this with Sarkin. I would... Yeah, so you could go Mono Red with, like, yeah, go Sarkin instead of Krasis. Krasis is just really nice, though. Like, if if you're going to take out Krasis, you need something that... You need a really good card advantage thing at the top end. You don't need, like, Sarkin at the top end, because um, you need to be able to, like, gain life, refill your hand, 
like that kind of stuff. Like this, this card's really good. So you maybe need something like a Mortal Sun. Definitely like the Krasis. <laughs> there are a lot of Planeswalkers around these days. Okay, yeah, I'll try. I'll try Burning Prophet next time, Matthew. Right, so Matthew plays the deck likes uh, Burning Prophet in it <clears throat> instead of Daredevil. You know, so it's just like a one. This plays you know a lot better defense, and then uh, lets you scry every time you play like your Shock or Lava Coil. You're like scrying. I guess it is non-creature spell. I thought it was instant or sorcery, to be honest. I didn't realize that treasure map Chandra uh, triggered it as well. But yeah, there we go. Mono Red Crisis. Um, you know, even though it's a 2 3, still not so bad. Kind of impressive. All right, if you are uh, watching this video later on, on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, that's it for Mono Red Crisis for today.